the righteousness or justice of God. Now, I know these are some of his most popular attributes. The same Hebrew and Greek words are used both for righteousness and justice. How many in here does that shock you? Anybody? Righteousness and justice are the same words. How many in here like to, like, like to be righteous? How many in here like justice? We'll, we'll come back to that. The righteousness or justice of God is an attribute that leads him always to do right. Now, I need you, need you to figure, look, listen real close. See, sometimes we may wrestle with human beings that's doing what's right. we got to get our flesh. Do you realize that God can't do wrong? It's his nature to always do what's right. So how would you like to deal with somebody that you know, Nehemiah, that's enough, to deal with somebody that always does what's right? That you can count on them to always doing what's right. Now, we say that, but can we really wrap our minds around that's the God we serve? That his nature is to always do right by you. He cannot do anything else other than do right by you. Now, how many of you know he can't always, but sometimes, but sometimes by him doing right can feel wrong because he always does justice. He always does it righteously. And we're the ones usually that we're the ones that usually sometimes get us on the wrong side of that stick. But thankfully we now have a new covenant and we can put the blood under it and get back on the right side of it. And Satan will come along and say, Hey, you gotta do righteousness, you gotta do justice on them. And Jesus will say, Hey, I don't see I don't see nothing. I see the blood. I don't see nothing. So it's how most people have seen. So O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, Ezra 9 15. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, Psalms 116, 15, verse 5. The, right, the Lord is righteous in all his ways, Psalms 145, verse 17. Righteous art thou, O Lord, Jeremiah 12, 1. O righteous Father, the Father hath not known thee, John 17, 25. God's righteousness and justice demand at the same time punishment for the wicked and reward for the righteous. Now, this is something that people want to say does not happen. How many know God God is still punishing the wicked? I hate to break it to you, but he's still in that business. That's why it's good to be under the blood. Amen? And he's still rewarding the righteous. That's why he says, I set before you today blessings and curses. Choose this day whom you'll serve. Let me be your master and I'll give you a road map to keep you from getting spankings. Amen? So punishment for the wicked. You all can read that later. Reward for the righteous. You all can read that later. But how many know that God cannot like pick favorites? Did you all know that? Well, little Bobby... I saw you had a really rough life, so I'm going to let you go for burning down the doghouse. But little Susie, I saw you pull your sister's hair and cut it. You know, God doesn't pick favors. He just, he sees the word. And if anything in my life, and it can be annoying to people, I've tried to become that guy. Where I see the word, and honestly, I, I think I haven't totally arrived, but I've, I've got you. My, you can ask my bride. I think I do. To me, the word is the foundation. That's there's. That's just it. Amen. So the holiness of God. I'm, I'm hurrying along tonight. Stay with me. And one cried, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts." Isaiah six three. For he is a holy God, Joshua 24, 19. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel, Psalms 22, verse 3. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy, Psalms 99, verse 5. 
Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, John 17, 11. But as which hath called ye is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Now, who's he talking to right here? Us. He's saying God's holy. So God can't be anything but holy. There's no dirty, unsanctified part in God. And he's, tell, he's telling us, what's your conversation? Anybody? Talk to Yana. What's your conversation? If we're, we're talking about conversation. What is that? All right. So God said to be holy in your conversation. What do you think that means? That if it doesn't, if it doesn't glorify God or honor God or honor the person, if it isn't pure and undefiled, it should not be coming out of our mouth. It's a little more in depth than that. God's holiness is a big deal. Anybody else have thoughts on holiness? What's it mean to be holy? Not let the worldly things get into us. Amen. Now, isn't it, isn't it good that God is holy? He is pure? Because if He's holy, that means there's hope for us to be holy. Through Him, not through ourselves. Amen. So... Because it is written, be you holy, for I am holy. So how many know God God wasn't messing around when he told us to be holy? Be pure. Amen. It's not popular today. You know, it might have been overdone once. When I was growing up, they had the rod and the stick, and they beat you with it, you know. <laughs> if you weren't good enough, then God loves you. He loves you just like us. I can tell you, if you're in love with him, he'll help you be holy. He'll help you fine-tune your stick where you, you know, me forcing you to do what's right will never change you, but being in love with God will. And it'll make you be holy because you love God. Why? Because you want to spend time in His presence. And right here where they're talking about holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, they're in an intimate time of worship. They're in an intimate time of praising God. They're deep in His presence. So He's saying to be in my presence, you've got to be holy because I'm holy. I mean, it would be like if you had the whitest carpets in the town and you wouldn't want me to come over with my muddy clay boots and walking all over cutting a jig. You want me to take my boots off at the door. The holiness of God is manifested in His hatred of sin. Woo! Who wants to talk about that subject? Anybody? <laughs> Anybody want to talk about God's hatred of sin? Did you all know that God still hates sin? Sometimes I think we focus so much that God loves us because people had such trouble with it that we've, we've shied away that God hates sin. God doesn't hate people, but He does hate sin. There's nothing wrong with saying that. He hates the sin, the sin in their life. But until they repent and, and turn, it's all the same. And His delight in holiness and righteousness. So God hates sin. He delights in holiness and righteousness. You can read those verses at home. The love of God. A good definition of love is a desire for delight in the welfare of others. That means you care more about others, how they're doing, what they're doing, and taking care of them and their well-being. That means it's an action word. Amen? So, how do you know God is love? 
1 John 4, 8 through 16. You've been around here very long. You should know that God, it's not, it's not something He does, it's who He is. God is love. The Father himself loveth you, the disciples, because he has loved me. John 16, 27. He that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. John 14, 21. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved, as, has loved them as thou hast loved me. John 17, 23. The amazing thing about God's love is that he loved us when we were in sin and altogether unlovable. How many have found it amazing that God loved you right where you were at when you came to Christ? Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. And how many know that's the attribute we should be showing other people? Amen. He may hate their sin, but he still loves. He, he's God is able. He, see, we we need more like God. He is able to hate their sin and love them all at the same time because that's who He is. That's His nature. He is completely able, capable of hating the sin and loving the person. Amen. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So no matter how dark, red, how unbelievably hard to get out, he said, I'll make it white as snow. Amen. How many have found that to be true? Isaiah 1.18. But God commendeth His love towards us and that we will, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8. You know, Christ gave His life before you straightened out yours so that you could. Now that's love, isn't it? Amen? How many know, somebody look at your neighbor. I know we're going long tonight. Just stick with me. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, God is love. God is love. And God is holy. And he still don't like sin. Amen. Amen. That's why we need, somebody look at your neighbor and say, that's why we need to repent. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Yeah, come on. Let's get, Psalms 94, 9 through 10 shows that God hears. Wait a minute, I missed it. Yeah. I missed my whole false concepts. I'm like, wait a minute, I had a whole thing on here that I was going to drive home. <laughs> All right. Just a short little thing. I want to deal with just, I could have done with hundreds, but I want to focus mostly on the good. We're going to quickly deal with some false concepts about the nature of God. Before I start, has anybody in here ever had a wrong attitude about who God is that you want to share with the group? Wrong idea, Sister Mom. I thought he was a judge. The judge. He was harsh. Mm -hmm. He is one, but he's also ultimately always a redeemer, amen, as we as we found out. Amen. Somebody else. Yes, ma'am. He was always Amen. Wasn't it great to see in the very beginning how he's a God of he wants to he's a restorer. That's who he is. Keep thinking that silly worship song every time I say that. It's who I am. It's who, I am. It's who he is. Somebody else tonight. I said I saw other hands. Sister Heather. An ogre. <laughs> I think that's been the consensus tonight, people, really. Now, how many know there's a side of God that you really don't want to see? Yeah. But how many know that's because you've taken yourself there? Mm -hmm. And He's doing whatever He can to get you out of there. That's the difference, I believe, in the reality that most people would never understand. I mean, He's... So did you have your hand up, Pastor Tim? Okay. All right. So, can anybody pronounce my next big word for me? Pantheism. Has anybody ever heard of pantheism? <coughs> it's the concept that God is everywhere and in everything. Has anybody now listen, I'm not saying God can't manifest himself into different things, but I'm going to drive something home here that's very vital to you in this day and time. 
So let's just go ahead and read this. The, so God is everything and everything is God. And God has no existence apart from his creations and hence has no personality. See, if you just start thinking, well, that tree can be God. That that <laughs> sunset can be God. That that ocean over there is God. And I see God in everything. Well, guess what? I see God in everything too. I see, but I don't see actually God. I see his handiwork. Amen. There's a big difference between seeing God and seeing His handiwork. Because how many know we've we, we, what was the first things we established? That nobody has seen God. They've seen His manifested glory. So sometimes, you know, I've seen some things when I was, how many saw any of my pictures when I was in Florida? Anybody see any of those? My sons? I saw God's glory. And the sun said, I did my best with my naked eye to capture. Matter of fact, the one morning it was sun, it was, the sun was breaking, and I'd been to bed late, and I got up at like 5 o'clock, and Pastor Tammy knows it's God when I'm up at 5. She just knows. She's like, what can I do to help you? <laughs> to get you wherever God's taking you. <laughs> bless, my, bless her heart. She's good like that, because she knows it's God. She's like, what, She's like, what are you doing? Like, Why are you asking me like I ever know? <laughs> I am just, he told me to get up and go to the beach. I'm going to the beach. And bless his heart, that morning Isaiah got up and he wanted to come and he was wide awake. I said, oh, he's like, what are we doing? I said, we're just going to listen to the Holy Ghost. He's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, we did. And it was beautiful. And God, God showed me something. He spoke to me during that time is what I'm trying to say. But I didn't see God. God wasn't there. I, his handiwork was there. His spirit spoke to my spirit. But he wasn't exactly there. Because so many times today, people try to say they see God everywhere. But God has a personality, doesn't he? God has attributes, doesn't he? Does that tree have an attribute? No. Does that tree have a personality? No. Does that tree have wisdom? No. Is that tree holy? So can that tree possibly be God? No. So, you know, sometimes we don't want to hurt people's feelings. They come up with all this stuff. And sometimes we just, that's why we have to know the basic Bible doctrine. And go, there is no, I'm sorry, I hate to break it to you. That's God's handiwork. And I can marvel at God's handiwork. But that can't be your God. <coughs> sorry. How many, are, how many are hearing me? How, how many have had that friend that tried telling them that? Everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll go ahead and read this. God is a living God as distinguished from idols, which are things, not persons. So the difference is God's not a thing. God is a living person. And remember, He's everywhere. He's an invisible reality. He cannot be that thing. He, he's everywhere at the same time. He can't even fit in our minds, remember? So Jeremiah 10, 1 through 16 shows God is living, everlasting, having wrath, indignation, the power of creation, wisdom, discretion, and voice. These characteristics show that God has a personality. He is not a thing. And he even has a sense of humor. I will ne you guys have heard this poor joke a thousand times. You'll probably hear it a thousand more. I'll never forget the time I was reading the Word and I came, uh, it, it was just hilarious. I was really down, honestly, the day that God showed me He parted the Red Sea by blowing His nose. And I read that and I'm like, <laughs> that's funny. Like you can't tell me he don't have a sense of humor. The God that blew out of all the, you know this great miracle that's recorded through history that everybody's going to tell, and out of his nostrils came a breath of fresh air, and he parted the Red Sea. He blew his nose. He went. <laughs> Come on, you you can't tell me that's not a God that's got a sense of humor. He's like, man, somebody's going to read this and they're really going to get it. I can't wait till they get it. <laughs> So he has a person. How many know God? More than that, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. How many know God? We're made in God's image. Mm -hmm. So the closer we get to acting like Him and, and holier than Him and cleaning up ourselves, the more we <laughs> represent Him. Amen. But how many know He wants us to have a good time? He likes to, he you know He likes to laugh. So 
You see Acts 14 through 15, and 1 Thessalonians 1 through 9, Psalms 94, 9 through 10, shows that God sees, hears, chastises, corrects, and teaches knowledge. Now, how many in here would like God to be your teacher? Amen. Amen. Now, I want to tell you, He will. But remember that part I taught about the whole master thing? Just be ready. Big smile. But how many know that that is not something? That tree is not going to teach me something. The ocean may teach me I need to breathe underwater, but it's not going to teach me much. Deism teaches that God created the world and put it into all the necessary powers of self-action and development, set it going and left, left it to go by itself. He has nothing to do with its actions. He has withdrawn himself from the world and it is, it is creatures completely. This is wrong. Now, Jesus did move on to the right hand of the Father intercede for you and me, but he didn't leave us down here powerless. He says the kingdom of God is within us. Amen? But how many know God never withdrew from this world? Come on, are you with me? Psalms 104, verse 26 through 30. Isaiah 45, 5 through 7. Matthew 6, 26, 28 through 28. Matthew 10, 29 through 30. Show that God sustains, governs, and cares for the world and every creature in it to the smallest detail. And that he is personally active and present in world affairs, even the presidency. How do you know that? How do I know that? Anybody? Amen. It says God puts on the throne whom he wants on it. Does that mean we shouldn't vote? No, he's given us free will. The same way they were able to choose Saul over God. The same way that they got a they got someone else over a David. The same, same way they we can always choose to be a knucklehead because God gives us free will. <laughs> Amen. So has anybody ever met somebody that just thinks that God's put it into play and what's gonna be is gonna be? How many can you see, if you see here, listen, God's still sustaining it, governing it. Otherwise, what would be the sense of prayer? Amen? All right. Quiz time. I know I went fast. A lot of information. You guys ready? All right. Completion is yes or no. Made it easy. It's easy. Well, it's not easy, but the answers are easy. I mean, just got to answer yes or no. The Bible doesn't try to prove, prove God. What are three primary names of God in the Old Testament that reveal His deity? Wait, 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 wait. What's that? They're, they're all correct. Y'all are doing good. Now. According to John 4, 24, God is a spirit. Has God ever manifested himself in a visible form? Yes. <laughs> a trick question. Jesus has. <laughs> no. He couldn't handle it. No, he has not. God himself has never manifested himself completely in the visible form. Yeah, well, he would man he, Jesus manifested himself and filled with the train of glory. And it would, so God manifested himself through Jesus, but he never has personally showed up. Because the Bible says no man has seen him. Everybody understand, Pastor? All right. I did elaborate on that one for a little bit for the record. God's righteousness and justice demand 
punishment for the wicked and reward for the righteous. Aren't you so thankful for Jesus? Amen. But I want you to know that God, without Jesus, listen, who would want to not be saved? Because God still demands justice for wickedness and reward for righteousness. That's a scary place to be from an almighty God. Uh, the doctrine that teaches that God is everywhere and everything and has no personality is called atheism. Good answer. True or false, God is all-powerful, all-wise, everywhere, and righteous. God did not love us when we were in sin and unlovable. False. Man is the source of all true love. False. God has no power over nature. God is eternal with no beginning and no ending. He always was, He always is, and He always will be. We can best know God by searching the Scriptures and seeing what they reveal about Him. Good job. Amen. All right, I do want to go quickly. I know we went late. I just want to hear... Good job, Isaiah. He filled it out to me. Kept up tonight. So, what was something you all got from tonight? I know we went late. I just want some nuggets. What's something you all got from tonight? A lot of information. I pray it becomes rhema revelation. Instead of just a lot of revelations. Sister Rachel. Um, just that Jehovah um, is I am that I am and then you fill in with um, the rest of the Hebrew that he will provide or good health and the peace. Amen. Good stuff. I'll get you. Sister Rebecca. In order for us to truly know that, we need to know his character and attributes and who he really is. Amen. Good stuff. Sister Heather. God is all powerful. There's nothing too hard for him. And Sometimes you just try to throw him in a box and not realize that he's all powerful and he can do everything. Amen. Good stuff. I'm on it. Well, I would like all every guy's name. I'm Jesus. We haven't you didn't cover all of them tonight. We covered a lot of them. Last year or so I covered I don't know, a lot. Who was next? I lost count. Sister Mom. Uh, the Spirit of God that was manifest was actually Jesus, and we can still see that Spirit now. Amen. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Isaiah. Amen. He did, didn't he? Did you learn about that today? Yeah. All right, somebody else, something to grab from tonight. Going once? Yes, sir. I, I, I love that uh, Jesus was all, I mean, that God was always here. He was the Jamaica, uh, Jamea and the Omaka. He was the beginning and the end. Amen. And he is. Everything began with him and it will all end with him. Amen. All right, anybody else before we close? Thanks for coming tonight. If you check the church uh, Facebook page, you'll uh, see a list of the 12 lessons we'll be covering, and God willing, and the creeks don't rise. I've made it my mission to get through one every week. So <laughs> Next week won't be as heavy, but this was a lot of information to cover, but we were kind of talking about a big guy. Yeah. You're talking about God. I just know what happens if I start spacing these out. We'll be here. From yeah, we know. <laughs> Amen. Anybody? How many? How many learned something tonight that you felt like was worth coming to church for? Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, Pastor Timmy, won't you come up, take prayer request, and close us in prayer?